Call the meeting to order. Minutes from February 9th. Uh, no, you're approving the 23rd. Oh, 23rd. Nice. I move we approve them. Second. Done. We're appointing Keith Fargo to the highway department. Qualifications. <laughs> what it says here. Scheduled. Scheduled appointments. All right, Chief. All right. <clears throat> Where's the PowerPoint? The PowerPoint right here. It'll shine through my paper. Um, I was asked to come in to update the board with some of the things going on in the highway department. Um, so, one of the things I wanted to make sure the board is aware of um, some of the new things going on with Mass DOT. Um, we have a program, it's called Streetscapes. Um, it's money that's available to be spent. If, you know, it's, it's a competitive grant. The monies are available and they have to be spent by June of 2017. So it's budget money that they have. And there's some of the qualifications that we have is you have to one of the you you need to go to one of these streetscape meetings to learn more about it. And um, I don't have the exact amount, but there are there is money available, and it is money that would basically go towards like our center of town type stuff. It's not it's not money that can be used out in rural areas. It's it's more of your your center of town type district. I understand. Mark and I, Mark's aware of this program and he's scheduled to, I believe, take a one to meet the criteria and get, take the class that's, that's necessary. Um, another new program that Mass DOT has out there and I thought was kind of unique in the fact that certainly meet our, our needs is they have funding available for bridges under 20 feet. And as you know, one of the, yeah, Paul's here. One of the things you know we've been dealing with numerous years is trying to get the Williamsburg Road open. And we were initially told from Mass DOT, no, you can't. We will not fund it because it's not eligible. It doesn't have a 20 foot span. So this is money, and I think Mark has, do you have the number? We looked it up. You, you came up with it. There's a certain amount of funding that is available. Again, there's going to be a lot of bridges in the state of Massachusetts that meet this criteria, so it'll be a competitive grant again. Um, I would encourage us to, once again, try to utilize our leverage that we have in Boston with our legislators to see if we could possibly um, work that in our favor. So would that be for permanent bridges there, or, or it would, temporary it, No, it could be used for permanent structures. I, I still feel that we are, and I'll go into this, um, I'll go into Williamsburg Road a little bit more. Um, I had, in the past month, I went to the Conservation Commission, and I did, I had a request for determination of applicability for three projects and one of them was the, the bridges on on Williamsburg Road and Conservation Commission have given us the the okay I do not have to file a notice of intent which is a um, a big savings to the town and it means we're at the point where we can move forward with it I've been trying to contact and notify Mass DOT the bridge department who I need to talk to and I continue to get nothing more than his voicemail and leave voicemails. Um, I would recommend that we follow up again with his boss, the you know the the engineer resident and you know the engineer, the overseas mass district too. I feel we should send a letter to their to the district engineer again in regards to the Windsor Road also. Just we have the name of that district engineer. I, it used to be Al Stegman, and Al retired. Yeah, he retired. And I'm trying to think at the moment. I can't think of who it is. And this is DOT two, district so two down there in Northampton. Northampton, correct. And so we could drive down to that building and look this guy up. He won't be there. Well, I'll wait. So good luck. 
Um, anyways, I, I feel that, you know, I'll work with Mark if, if it's okay with you, and I'd like to get another letter out to the to the district engineer saying that we're, we've gotten the clearance from our conservation commission, because that was one thing that they were asking about in the past, and now we have that. That's something that's changed on our aspect. So now, as far as I'm concerned, it's totally in there, or for the most part, in there court now to come up with the structures which they said they had in inventory they just need to utilize you know, utilize exactly where they are and we need to begin to make arrangements to get them okay. to get them moved to Waitley. If um, you, resol you resolve this uh, one-way issues with them? The, yeah I mean it, it, the last thing that they were worried about was they made a comment in regards to the downgrade off of one of the bridges to the point where they were worried about um, a low boy getting hung, hung up on it. And, and I responded back, I said that, that it doesn't, that should be a mute point because the other bridge further up is still gonna be posted at three ton. Those, those vehicles cannot drive on that road anyways. Um, well, I suppose there's always a possibility that they will, but that's something that you're just, it's, it's gonna be posted for three ton because we still have that other, one other bridge that that's what it's got to be, the road will be posted at. I thought they wanted you to control one way traffic. They, on that the part they give, they, they subsided on that. We talked, we were, we answered their questions in regards to having pull offs to the side and, and address their, they wanted to see exactly what the line of sight was. We've taken care of that. We've, we've given them the line of sight that they wanted so that as a vehicle approaches, they, want, they were wanting to make sure that as a vehicle approached, they could see another vehicle coming. And, and again, the road is, for the most part, in many places, it's, it's one way, it's always been that way. It's physically uh, so narrow in some spot that there's, and you have the brook on one side and, and a steep embankment on the other side. There's really nothing you can do other than utilize the pull-offs. And so it's common sense in that aspect. So, um, the other two, the other two prog, um, things that I had the RDAs on was Egypt Road. They've given me the okay on the Egypt Road, also the intersection Route 5 and 10 with the, um, so we don't have to file a notice of intent in there, so we're good to go on that. I've met with the water commissioners about Egypt Road intersection. Um, one of the things that's been on there scope of, of projects they'd like to see in the some point in time getting done is closing in the loop, the water main on Egypt Road. Presently, there is no water on water main on that side of the road and so I've talked to them and we're gonna maybe a deal where if they, if the water department comes up with the materials for the, for the pipe, we can, while we're in there with the equipment that we have, we can, um, so I'm working with that right now to try to work with the water department and the highway department to see that we can get that done. Um, so I'll keep you updated on that. Um, <coughs> other things that to update you on, um, <coughs> my upcoming pro paving projects for this summer, um, Christian Lane from the railroad tracks to Long Plain Road, and also leveling course on North Long Plain Road from well, what used to be in, in the area where we left off a year ago, in the area of where Judy Hunter used to live, who lives there now, all the way up to, to this intersection out here. That would be just leveled up, like a ship leveling course. Um, so Long Plain be Chip seal? It's at a, not, not until until like the following year, we'll let it sit a city year. And then it would be because um, it is to what we'll be doing is is just a um, just a leveling course, just like what was done on um, for instance on Swamp Road a year ago. So you're just doing leveling course? That was on Christian Lane and Long Plain? No, Christian Lane will 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 be a, a full blown paving project. Chip seal or no. Overland. Christian Lane. Um, Lane overlay. Yeah, the the, use, the criteria that we've been following is basing on the, the the road classifications. On the road classification, like Christian Lane is a much higher 
road cl classification in the state and something like that is um, the, the traffic counts are much higher on Christian Lane than they are on Long Plain Road. So like Long Plain Road sees a, a chip seal surface versus just the bituminous right. overlay. And are you doing anything else other than the overlay on their road? On Christian Lane? Yeah. Christian Lane would be a, a level and over, so it would be two, two passes. Just like same thing that was done on River Road a year ago. In the last time, you know, it's been we're I don't remember the exact date. I don't have it written down in here. But the last time that the stuff like the you know the area that I'm working on now proposing was done when the industrial park was built way back. I don't know if anybody if you recall the date that that was done, but it's, it's the condition of the the roads that you know that. Christian Lane and especially, you know, North Long Plain Road from Fairview Farms South is very deteriorating very fast. And Are you going to do anything with the drainage? There's, in regards to Christian Lane drainage, the, the drainage that's there is all out on private property now. Um, there are, there is no, there is no, and never has been any drainage in the, in the town layout on Christian Lane in that section. It's a system that. I have no clue as to how it was put in, where it was put in, but it's all outside of our layout. It starts way back, you know, to the west in regards to by Joe Jeffrey Cocotts and travels down. The only place that it's in our layout is where it crosses the road. But other than that, it's all outside of our layout. It's on private property. And, and I know there was I don't know if there still is, but at the time there's many houses that have stuff tied into it from their basements because it's a private system. Okay. And when is the cross the rail crossing paving going to be done? When the contractor. Yeah. The contractor um, came and dig safed it last fall. Called me up and says he's going to be there in a day or two to do it. And never saw it. I don't know. Uh, which which road across? Christian Lane has not been completed. Oh. Hasn't been paved yet. Um, but the, as I said, the contractor came out there and dig safed it, and called me and told me he'd be in in a day or two. And nothing ever came of it. I call. I've called the the contact person I've had numerous times and asked why and what, and I don't ever get a response back. Does my ask DOT have any say in that? Um, not like the local, it's at a different, Mass DOT is involved in it, but not like at a local level. I, I, I'm not sure. To, yeah, I believe it's it's some part of Boston, out of Boston. It's, the railroad does have Mass DOT personnel working with it, but I don't know, certainly not at a local level. <coughs> but I'll keep following up. Um, the last, what, are, what else do I have? Um, Poplar Hill Road, um, the ongoing situation there, um, the one thing that has changed a little bit, um, the two landowners and also Smith College are talking, they'd like to see pavement. So that's something that's, so I'm in the process of starting to look into that a little bit more. I don't know whether or not we can offer a little bit of leverage to Smith College towards that. I wanted to sort of get your opinion on that. The one thing that Smith College did talk to when I talked to Reed um, Johnson Baritone, I think, yeah in, yeah, in a, I've only talked to him on email, but in my conversation with him, um, he wanted the pavement to go all the way up to his, to their turnaround. Well. Our, our our town layout ends way back down, so we you know I certainly I'm not going to pave on private property, so um, we're at, we got to do some discussion, and you know if they want to if they want to pay for the whole thing, then they they could. So who knows? That was going to be my question. If, we, if they paid for it, yeah, they paid for it. what? But there again, the that's whole, why the I whole think, shooting match. 
that's why I also feel that we need to follow up and get the issue of where the turnaround is, where the easement is. It's got to be. It's got to get finished at some point in time, instead of just getting dragged out. Um, is it still going to be a goat path up through there? Or is it going to be the width that, that it's supposed to the, be? The Mass DOT, that's what I, I sent this set of standards to Reed, and I explained to him that the, the minimum standards is, it, it could be 18 feet with a um, two foot shoulder that we have to maintain, which I'm not in favor of, because then it just means going up and having to maintain a shoulder. Whereas we go and do a like a 20 foot 20 feet of pavement, we wouldn't have to be doing any shoulder maintenance. It could be just, um, and that's what we've, that's the type of thing that we've done in the past. Um, Would that be as wide as Poplar is paved now? Yeah, even narrower. When you come down, okay. when you come down from, <coughs> certainly from <coughs> Tom's all the way down through, it's at least 22, I believe. So it wouldn't be as, as wide, but certainly the dust, the dust control aspect would be taken care of, and the erosion, that's another issue. There, there, there's concern about the erosion on the, you know, the, the water bars that we have there, and the, the gravel that washes out into the, onto private property, well, it's, I can't, I can't help that when it's at the moment, but if it was paved, those, those that could be a, taken care of. Um, and that's basically all I have, unless you had something else for me. Have we contacted um, Rosenberg's office about Haydenville Road? Recently? No, we sent a letter a while ago, and I believe we talked to Mary Jane. Mary Jane. That's right. Um, but not since that conversation. The response you had from Mary Jane? Sort of out of their hands. But wasn't it sort of like, you know, what's the chances of? Yeah. But see, that's not really the way you look, should look at it because we don't need the full amount. We just yeah. need a, a little bit to get the engine. Well, yeah. her response that also <laughs> was this engineering, and engineering is very rare. It's usually, you're usually paying for bricks and mortar and not engineering. Engineering, the town, some people are going to see it as the town doesn't have any skin in the game because the, a lot of the towns pay for the engineering themselves. And, and my response to her was that the engineering would bankrupt our town. I mean, it just so if the state can't step up and, and, and help out with the bond issue, then nothing's going to happen because there's no way the towns are going to be able to afford even the engineering on this. And it, I sort of felt that it fell on deaf ears a little bit. Um, that being said, we just got to keep keep pushing the issue. We did send a letter to the Secretary of Transportation a while ago, and we copied Rosenberg's office and Kulik's office. Kulik's office sent their own letter, so but we've had no response. What was the date on that again? I'm ballparking. I mean, I don't need the uh, October. Maybe? October, right? So okay. Well, who paid for the engineering on the, the other part of the road that was just recently done? There wouldn't have been engineering on that. Was Are you that? talking the, the, what the town did from yeah. the... Was that chapter 90? Chapter, no, 90. chapter 90. And, and I engineering was eligible for that? What's that? Engineering was eligible for chapter 90? Yeah, there was very minimal amount of it we did in-house, but yeah, other than a set of plan. Yeah. This is, mm -hmm. you know, what's involved in this project is much more because you're looking at redesigning intersections, totally addressing major changes to head and drainage, very much a different different situation. Okay, but we're one of what, three towns that? Two. Oh, Northampton is Northampton is only involved in the fact that the, their, their city water department owns so much property in the watershed area and they are very vested in what happens with the drainage. Right now, presently, any most of the drainage in the area of plus or minus a mile around the reservoir all goes 
if there's a tanker roll over, it's going right into their reservoir. It's their drinking water. I can't help but think that that's, that's our best bet of leverage. Uh, only because every time there's, there's something going on with somebody's water supply, Flint, Toledo, I forget where yeah, in West Virginia. I mean, trying I mean, to work with, try to get DEP to help push it along too, and that hasn't helped in the past either. Okay. But. What is Williamsburg doing? What have they done? I mean, have yeah. they wrote letters or asked? All three communities, have, including Northampton, have sent letters. Okay. All right. Anything else, Keith? That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Chief Hannum. Uh, we're here to uh, recommend this, this committee get the select board purchases, the fire truck that we have a bid on. Well, we don't have a bid, we have the recommendation, the proposal that um, we've been looking at. And here it is. I got it from Mark the other day. It's the contractors there. Actually, here's a picture if anybody wants to look at it. Um, we look at two specific trucks. We look at um, uh, E1 and KMA, both of them were on a state bid, and then we asked KMA if they had a, uh, a yeah. demo, a, a demo truck out there that they actually did. They came back and said that they had a, they did have one that, that had the pump and the engine in it, in it that we wanted, the type of uh, body style, and that's the truck there. They actually showed us that truck. That pro that truck. When it was on the market in 2000, you can hang on. I'm not um, it was on the market in 2014 for $530,000. They said that they would sell it to for $370,000. And it was a prototype. They watchers paid them to do some some interesting stuff with it that they couldn't sell the truck. Electronics. Well, they, they had a computer screen as a pump panel, touch screen. Nobody in the fire service wanted to touch it. So, uh, did Watchers change it back or did KME? Waters. Waters. Watchers changed it back to a, an electronic pump panel on it. So now that they, just back in December. So this truck just actually came out on, onto the market. Um, it's a rescue pumper, a lot of cabinet space. The only, it's been to California back twice. It has 40,000 miles on it. That's not a concern to us because 40,000 miles on a diesel truck that's built for 300 is nothing. Um, we've got them to put on uh, on-spot chains, a front suction, a uh, hydraulic generator, uh, a, a mechanical siren, backup alarm, uh, not backup alarm, backup camera with a GPS, uh, a, another rear discharge, uh, some adjustable shelves, New tires, new brakes, new batteries, and a pump test. And, he, and a warranty starts at the day we buy it. The extended warranty starts the day we buy it. And for $395,000. So we're saving $5,000 off the bond. You're yeah. saving them. And getting a $600,000 truck. Exactly. That, the point is you're, you're saving a lot I, of I get I would just say getting is. We wouldn't be able to get the type of thing, the things that we're getting if you didn't if buy it. Yeah, just purchase. Do it the okay. Um, then I would. Anybody have any questions? No. No. I would make a motion to authorize the purchase of this fire truck for the recommendation of the committee. You can have Mark sign that. Be able to sign a contract. Yeah. Okay. Second. I need to review the contract I just received, and so I okay. have a little time, but. Okay. If there's anything that you think council should look at, fine. But I can't imagine that there's a need for that. So you got a second there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. One other question. While I'm sitting here, we have a, we'll have a spare fire truck in the station that nobody wants. Neither one of the companies want to talk to us about it as on a trade-in, and I would like the, uh, the, this board to consider that truck a surplus property and give it to the Whaley Firefighters Association and what we'll do is we will dispose of it and use that money for equipment in the station. How do you dispose of it? Sell it. Just sell it on the... What's the value you're expecting? Uh, what did we say today? Maybe? 
I we looked online on similar situations and we we feel that it'll bring in the two to three thousand at the best. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Best case scenario. Is this going to go through Mark the sale with that if state bid set up set up you had? The the new truck would have to would be through the state bid. No, it's mm -hmm. federal. It goes on, it's on a federal list. Okay, but it's it's it can't be built bid pays. No, no, no. Surplus. The, the sur the surplus. Extra truck. Like the way, we did with the town truck. The way the no the what what John is referring to and what has been done in the past with the other fire department vehicles was the selectmen have given that vehicle those vehicles to the association like the tanker that they made the tanker that is now our oldest tanker which now belongs to Fairview Farms was given back to the association the association then turned around and sold it and then the association kept the profits yeah over. I don't have a problem with that okay but we found with the town truck we could triple what we got for use equipment by going through we looked bids, bids, bids. John and I looked on Municipid, which is where we sold our town truck and that's where we came up with 1980 and 1990 trucks that were getting around 5,000 and this is 75 I understand uh, so he's saying can we maximize we could, uh, what's the what's the what, does yeah. the process does it make sense for the process just to go through mark administratively so we can make we can sure still that we have maximize the return sure. you and that's something that could still be just to make sure we maximize are you okay with that one? Is the association a nonprofit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 501. I, I just 501 would like, I mean, I don't have any problem with that. I, I do think that I would like to contact council and just make sure that legally we can do that. I can't imagine you, you can't because we could do something on, on behalf of any friends of, but checking the council is fine. Okay. Because the association is no different than a friends of. I don't have a problem I just want to make sure that yeah. what we do is legit. So. Two or three thousand dollars, seriously? Mm -hmm. Warwick runs in 1957. I mean, we could upgrade them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much Tommy, can't you, can't you find a cheaper truck somewhere? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, we're not, if we're not looking to get money <clears throat> to the town for this, why should we tie up Mark with this well, activity but, but if, and, and just turn it over to the... Just to make sure they get uh, the right amount of money. And it's benefiting the town because the association buys equipment on, on behalf of fire protection. In yeah, but they would do it either way. No, no guarantee that. It, but if we did it your way, we got three thousand for the dump truck versus ten. Okay. I mean, it's not it's not a heavy lift I mean, for Mark to do this at all. I don't know. What, yeah, I, I mean, if, knows what Mark, you would tell us <laughs> if this was going to take you away from. Feed the poor. It's not a problem. We, right. we, we just okay. went through it with the golf truck. Okay. It's, it's an easy process. All right. Do so you have experience? Anything else? Can I make a picture back? I don't know where I went to. Okay. Oh, that material. It goes to my book. <laughs> all right, Mark. It's all you. Oh, public comment. Anybody want to say anything? I got a truck here on eBay for 25000 Okay, it's a 1949. Oh. <laughs> we gave them but 20, the 30 heck? years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's still there. It hasn't sold. Yeah, that's that frightening. I, I really am feeling much better about getting two, three hundred dollars for my no engine Ford Escape. Now. Maybe we should keep it for longer and then sell it when it's an antique. All right. We Get more money for it. Um, oh, oh Quint's here. Yeah. Mister, Monsieur Dawson. Solid Waste Committee appointment. Mark, why don't you take this one too? Let's do the first. Yeah, so real briefly, we went over this at the last meeting. Quinn uh, is requesting that he be appointed to the Solid Waste Committee. He has filed a disclosure which was recommended um, by the Ethics Committee. I did ask him to check with them. He did. He's filed his disclosure. Um, you know, this is pretty standard. You know, for a small town, my only recommendation would be that if you decide to appoint him, that you know you would obviously recuse yourself from any votes that um, or actions, I guess, that impact your own position with the 
I have no problem. Right. Or, or, or recommendation of, of, of salary, anything. It doesn't have to be punitive, it's just you know, anything that. Salary adjustments and whatnot are usually handled by the personnel committee right. anyway, so that's. Putting a Marco option. lounger in the, in the hut. What? What's wrong with that? You would recuse yourself. There, there was one, one person that, that had a comment on it. Were we able to get any more information? You mean from? Uh, the email on that. Uh, um, had a concern with that. Did you? Yeah, I did up? ask him. Um, he, he doesn't have any concern with Quint. Um, he's just concerned about, and I quote, the potential conflicts of interest of a staff member deciding issues, financial or otherwise, as a manager. Uh, committee supervising the same staff, but again, I don't think the Solid Waste Committee is making many financial decisions. So, I never accuse himself of it, in the in the event. Yeah, that right. Do I, I? I think it's fine. I think it's great. I, I I love it when people want to get involved, and we shouldn't be stepping on that enthusiasm. I agree. I agree. Okay. You all set? Yeah. Okay. Uh, motion done. I so good. You have anything to add? No, sir. Thank you. Feel free. What? I'm sorry. Feel free to leave. No. no. To comment. To oh, I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> no, <we're> very <laughs> grateful. Yeah. All right. It's my pleasure. I like it when his head pops out of the cardboard container. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it the hell out of it. Oh, sorry. Story. We didn't mean to throw that cardboard down there. <laughs> All right. All right. Mark, go back to Ed. Can we, can we jump down to the store? Oh, what? oh, these guys, yeah, let's get these guys out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we want to get you guys out of here, but. We love an audience. We never get one. Apparently, Mary Ellen doesn't like audience because she keeps pushing the agenda to the people who are in the audience. <laughs> she just wants to go home. Uh, all right. Um, so, where, Mark, I, I'm not following as you do this. Uh, so, this is a request from the Historical Commission uh, regarding the Conway School design project in the center of town. Uh, they would. Uh, you want to take this? Uh, first meeting is April nineteenth. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I thought we were all gun ho about this. No. I think we are. I think we are. Well, but, but, but they want. They have. They would like some someone. They would like people to come who are. What's the word? Uh, the no, this client committee. Stakeholders. The client the stakeholders. Uh, the client the power. The. the People to advise them. Well, that's the first meeting, at least, and the, the other two meetings, perhaps, to call it. And we thought that it would be a good idea to ask for some representation from the select board to uh, have someone there at that meeting or someone they wish to delegate. And this meeting is going to be where? April 19th. Um, where? 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 April 19th. In, it, it, okay. in Wrigley? <laughs> where? That's Wrigley. a Saturday. No, it's, it's a Tuesday. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. April 19th. March. Yeah. Oh, March night. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm working towards something. Where exactly in Wayland? I don't know yet. In here? Probably. I, yet. I think the person the closest hall. to the meeting site the, should be the one to go. Here are the town hall. I would think. And it's not one of the alternatives. <laughs> I would wait the heck away. Paul, it's six weeks <laughs> away. <laughs> I'm planning it. <laughs> right. At, at, the risk of, at the risk of making this a longer conversation than it needs to be, can I get oh, background? Yes. I, I need to probably speak better because I think I missed something somewhere. Yes. I brought copies of the contract that the select board signed and <laughs> well, okay. Mark signed it and the proposal. Just, just read it. We have CPC funding to bring the Conway School of Design to come in and look at the center of the town to look at walkways, parking, lighting, grading, circulation, landscaping. landscaping, to make a plan. Okay. And we asked, who else do we have? We have Keith. I gave all, I gave all my sheets right away. Keith, Keith Barnwell's on the committee. We'll, we'll be there at least at the first meeting, because he and his guys will probably end up being charged with either doing or maintaining any of the things that these people recommend. The, the point of the client committee is just to have a group of people to meet with the graduate students and brief them. So we don't want 27 people in the room because we'll just have chaos, but we wanted to have some representation. And we thought we ought to have somebody from the select board or and or, or, and or Mark there, you know. Sure. And then after that, it's a kind of public process. But Keith is not a member of the 
There's not a water commissioner. Why don't you have a water one of the water commissioners? Don't we have Nicholas? Um, no, 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 uh, no. It, there's a difference. The Waitley Water District is a different thing from the uh, town water department. Um, I don't right. know. Why did you ask me? Why did you ask it? Keith, because Keith runs the DPW. He's they're, they're the ones who are going to be. I think the confusion is he's listed as water. Drainage water comes in. Oh, so it's my mistake. That's oh. my mistake. Oh, okay. No, it's yeah. it's DPW. That's my drainage. mistake. He's there as DPW. Right. Yeah. Okay, so it shouldn't be highway department. Yeah. And if they recommend any modifications to the yeah. footprint, Keith's going to be involved. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, right. so, so, so like somebody. I, I apologize. Who, yeah. That's right. What time is this at on the 19th? Well, it's going to be evening because, and I, I don't know yet, because it's a graduate student project, and I've talked to the faculty member, but they haven't convened our team yet. Oh, okay. But but we know we want to meet it. Too many people can't meet during the day. So. And it'll be a site visit. Oh, they'll be here a lot. No, I meant, will this meeting be up in the center of town, or will it be in a room? Um, it could be. I mean, it just strikes me that we're going to be talking about, about the center of that's town. That's interesting. So. Um, I don't know yet. I mean, and, um, because we'll have to, <laughs> I don't mean to be vague, yeah. but I think we're obviously going to have to have a conversation with the graduate students before the meeting. Right. But a walk around would be a good idea. I have no problem joining you guys. Can we do it? If, if we could do it, you know, closer to the, you know, 530 range, 5, 530 range, that would be. Yeah, Becky, I, Becky is the one who has, you know, obviously has patience, and she said. She, right. Um, and Nicholas is out of the country that week. So, oh. Yeah. I, I'm just thinking because I my yeah. spring is very busy with, with mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. Fine. I'll nominate Jonathan then for I'll that. Jonathan's nominated himself. All those in favor? Okay. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Great. Good work. Okay. Thanks. I don't know if they're going to get in touch with you or me, so let's just okay. stay in touch because it's been a little loose now. I'll let you know this. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All we need to do is set up the town hall. <laughs> what? All we need to do now is fix up the town hall. The public hearing is tomorrow night. We need, we need to have this project you know, be kind of parallel to that, yeah. not bogged down. In. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. All right. All right. All right. What else, Mark? Thank you, guys. Thanks. Uh, I can start at the top and go through the rest if, unless you guys have anything specific. What no. time is that hearing, Judy? Well, Julia. Six. Six. Here, Judy, are you here as an innocent bystander, or do you have a? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> no. Wow, those are big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. yeah. you know. She wants to watch it live in yeah. person. I love it. So we're gonna start telling the popcorn and tickets. All right. All right. Take, take this away, Mark. Right, but we've done this before, so it shouldn't take long. I, uh, there's really not much to go over here. What I'm passing out right now is just the motions <coughs> for the special town meeting on the 14th. You can see that uh, I put your names in front of them and I've bolded any changes to it. Um, I just basically went through and alternated names here until you get to uh, the water department articles. I, I put Wayne down as the person who will make the motions for those. Representatives from the water department will be present at the meeting to answer any specific questions related to their own articles. Well, we okay. get along with everything except for Article 4. Yes. And uh, I believe Patty and Marty will one or the other, maybe both, will be there to explain that article. No, okay. they've got to be there. Yeah. Well, I, I can. You want to get the quick version of it? No, no not necessarily. But they've got to be there to, re okay. to to explain it because they, they can. They did go to the finance committee after this vote to explain it. Oh. Okay. And, and I don't think that there's much of a problem. I think there's a little bit of pushback, but. Okay. And we'll be able to talk about the 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 transfers to the enterprise. The, 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 from the enterprise. Yeah. Uh, yes. Wayne will also be there, and as well as the water commissioners. Right. So. Okay. All right. Uh, 
you don't need to, I mean, if you can save it, great, but I'll come prepared so that you have another copy at the special. So Article 11, the uh, planning board will be there? Yes. Talk about that uh, easement grant. I had no idea where that is even. I don't think the planning board is no, expecting to be there. Don is aware. He said he'd be there to explain it. So. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, recognition of volunteers and employees. Am I reading this right? Yeah. Paul, I promised you I would put that on there just to continue the conversation Good. and keep it going until it's resolved. What is it? Um, recognition of volunteers and town employees. We, we uh, Mary Ellen got this and, and I just wanted to bring this forward as something we talked about at, at the last meeting, I think it was, yeah. about recognizing an employee or a town volunteer on a monthly basis, some kind of write-up or something like that. Um, these are kind of on the expensive side, so I didn't, we didn't get a lot of them, but at least you know, we oh, great. one so that we could move in that direction. Yeah. And we'll plan to do that in April if that's something you guys want. I'm not sure how you want to go about it process-wise, whether you guys collectively want to nominate someone. Well, I'm not so much interested in having an employee of the month or week or whatever as just a list of everybody who serves the town. Okay. Yeah, cause I don't, I don't really think we we approve going ahead with that. We talked about it. We're going to discuss it further, I think. And yeah, we talked about a list somewhere of everybody that uh, helps the town out. And of course, Mary Ellen said that it's in the annual report. But I guess we wanted something more visible and maybe available quicker than yes. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't in think this we room, we want yeah, or a recognition on a monthly. No, I don't, I don't mean to buy one of these every month. That's not what I was getting at. I meant to have somebody recognized in this. And it can slide in and out. Yeah, That's exactly. fine, too. Oh, yeah, I didn't uh, mean, yeah. I wasn't suggesting. Oh, sure. Just okay. <laughs> yeah, it just slides in and out. Sorry. That, yes. But, and again, I apologize. Okay. Because I, I was just reminded by Mary Ellen that I had transportation issues, so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't car pretend. So I'm it, yeah. sort of playing catch up here. Yeah. Um, but I think... To Paul's point, if I understand what you're saying, Paul, that it's a great idea to have some awareness of, of who makes this town tick. Right. And because people are, are looking for, they want to know who, who's, who's involved with the town, but the people who are involved should have some, not commendation, but they should, it should be an aware, there should be an awareness that people spend time working on behalf of the town and, and taking that time away from family and, and that kind of stuff. So if, if there's somewhere on town hall, a current roster of, of volunteers and employees, I don't know how it would look, but I, I think yeah. it's great. Idea. Well, it'd be a, a chart. We can yeah. probably do that in, what, three of these maybe or something like that? Or? Right, well, I mean, we could have it, like, like I said, list of three plaques and maybe all centered around employee or volunteer of the month. Oh, and it's going to be a big, I mean, that's going to be a big, if you list out. I was thinking more of a nice poster back right. thing that could be easily changed, changed. Right. and would have all the employees, all the members of committees, volunteers listed, and a, and a uh, thing at the top that says, uh, you know, the people of Waitley would like to express their gratitude to the following uh, citizens or residents or whatever employees, volunteers who make this town work. But I think it's a good idea for, for volunteers, and but I'm not sure for employees because what do we have a handful the most and to recognize an employee to me would be kind of, uh, I don't know, upsetting to the other four permanent employees that don't get anything. I mean. Who's that? I'm confused. Well, you're talking employees. Yeah. In this everybody building. who gets paid by the town. Well, so then you want to list them all. Everybody. Everybody. Now, well, now pick one out. You're forgetting the school, Fred. Well, okay, you got the school, but I guess what I was looking at employees would be who are permanent, full-time employees in this building. Okay, you got Mary Ellen, Mark, Lynn. Uh, but but they don't have to be full time. They can be part time. I mean, you know the the 
people depend, regardless of how many hours a week they're putting in for the town to operate, they work hard and they should be recognized right. for their hard work. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just modern I think management. When this came up, it was to, you know, like you said, recognize everybody that's volunteering time. Well, but not just volunteering. We're, we're working, but yeah. but this, you know, choosing one person to recognize, I don't think was exclusive to a volunteer That's or an correct. employee. It was either or. If does that make sense? Is that what you were thinking? I, was I wasn't thinking so what? much as recognizing one person ever. I was thinking of recognizing everybody who makes this town work. Right. In whatever well, capacity. There was also some conversation about recognizing there was. The individual. That wasn't also. my idea but I'm for it I mean I but, think that's fine I mean we'll, we'll do whatever you want to do yeah. So. Yeah, I, tell us. I, I, I think like Paul was saying uh, the first part of your your comment was was uh, recognizing everybody volunteers somewhere on a list rather than listing individuals right now we also Jonathan we talked about since we've uh, been in this building there have been volunteers that are helping us finish this building that are not on any committee probably but have volunteered uh, Mark knows them has been in contact and we talked some of them people well uh, Mark maintaining a list uh, and when we're done finally with the remodel here have some award ceremony or, or presentation or something of all the employees all them people that have volunteered their time money and services Sure. Outside of committees, there's because there is people that now that are doing that that are not on any committee, or they're doing it not part of a committee, mm -hmm. doing it individually. Sure. Well, that that yeah. could be noted also in this poster or whatever, of and for those other people who volunteer, who are not serving on a committee, yeah. you wouldn't have to say that, yeah. including the following. Blah, 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 blah. Right, and you know, and, and and my guess is when this is all said and done, that we'll have some kind of a. A plaque like exists at the elementary school in terms of you know who's on the committee X Y and Z when to make this all possible. You could Wait. add to that to that plaque. You know, are, are you talking about this building? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's a whole other thing. But I'm yeah. for that too. I mean, but but it's yeah, combine it all so we don't have like thousands of plaques sitting around. It's like sort of giving everybody a trophy. Well, I wasn't thinking but, even of a plaque because once you get a plaque, then you know if you want to change something. Could I suggest a PowerPoint or a, a screen, a screen a that, that, that changes with names or faces or something, just rotates? It's part of our channel thing. Or on the website, yeah. You go to that website, but it's nice to have it where, where people well, come and if people come in here to vote, right? So be nice for everybody who comes in here to vote to see people's names on a, on a poster. You know, printed. No, because it's it's, it's entirely not, possible. Not engraved. Right. Yeah, it's it's entirely possible, and I haven't seen any analytics on this. That this building gets more visitors than our website does. I don't know that. I disagree with that, but that's. Okay. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't know how many visitors the website gets. Right. I mean, we don't, but I, I know a lot. Talk to a lot more people who are on the website. On the website than than wander in here. Right. So, I, I just I, I like the idea of. I can do both. Giving a giving an attaboy to people who right. spend time totally with so. the town instead of with their families every day. You know, just who we, we make the big bucks, so we get our half yeah. back. But you know. but how would how would how and who would identify that say individual that you're gonna we could present to the board? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm less inclined to do that. I I, I could go either way on that. I you know we we but I will say that. You know, every year we do, we, 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 we recognize someone in the town report. report. That could but, be what that is. Yeah. Well, but that being said, there are a lot of people who do great work for, on behalf of this town that are never going to make the cut on the annual reports because it's only one person a year. <laughs> They'll be on the poster. Well, right, that's, I, but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think it's a worthy, worthy discussion to continue to have. I don't think we've hit the nail on the head yet. And perhaps it's a homework assignment that we all sort of noodle what you we want. You put their picture on the side of the stockade. <laughs> 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 well, have you looked at others, other towns, Mark, see what anybody else is doing? Or? No. 
No. no. You know, I, I think the idea, though, of the, like, John's going to dedicate the town report to me or somebody else this year, which, and I thank you for that, and it could go in a plaque, and then that could change once a year. Right. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Or Judy or Dan. John I think Dan. It. John would have got it, but he's running again. I'm running again, yeah, so, you know. Like, you're I'm running again. again. <laughs> I am. Oh. And you didn't know that? I didn't know yeah. that. And it's in your paper, so we have no idea. I'm, they're already done. <laughs> okay. They're already done. Okay. Okay. So, so all right. Let's, so, we'll, we'll, continue, we'll table this and we'll continue to, to talk about it. What else is going on, Mark? Uh, town building use policy. I emailed it to you, but I'm going to send it around. Paper cup. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I, I don't expect you to come down on a decision tonight, but this was a continuation of a conversation we also had at the last meeting, which you missed, John. Um, the historical society was was asked to uh, provide liability coverage, naming the town of Waitley. Uh, they have done that and I have a copy of the policy. That policy is valid until February of uh, 2018. But as part of that conversation, we discussed having a building use policy that would mirror basically those liability coverages for short-term, one-night, or ongoing events. Uh, so what this is here is a, is a, a policy Page two is an application uh, with a signature agreement at the bottom. And again, if you want to take this home and read it over, we can push this to the next meeting so that you guys can yeah, I have, have some, a little more time with it. I have some comments that I made on the copy and printed off and I can send them to you. Okay. Uh, two, two things that come to, come to mind. I mean, first off is, is I'd like to see our, our Police department get involved in in this activity. If we're if somebody's holding an event at one of our properties, that they at least be aware of it and maybe report at the end whether they followed the conditions in here or not. Otherwise, it's up to you, Mark or Mary Ellen or somebody else here to see whether they did that. And at least if police are aware of it, they can do some check while the event is going on. And the other thing, the the, the dollar limits, the million and two million. Uh, Those are recommendations from my end. Okay, how much more is it going to cost to increase that to two to two and five? Yeah. I, I guess I I feel one one million two million for for a, for a town and an organization is is low. I mean that's the personal umbrellas are at that level. Um, that's what we that's what Maya suggested that we request the historical society and I then followed up with or from the historical society for their ongoing um, space at the center school I followed that up with a question about one day events you know are there different limitations are there different numbers that we need to be hitting and she said no these are their recommendations whether it's a one day event or whether it's a rental space so Okay, but it, but have you ever asked well, how much? I've never increase? asked how much any of this is. It's uh, I've never looked for a quote, so it's up to the applicant to secure the insurance. So right. Could yeah. I ask if there's a definition of an event? Yeah. Is it a is it a meeting? Is it a? Um, it could be a meeting. It could be a group. So gathering. so if could be you're music. talking if the Grange holds their regular monthly meeting, they're going to have to have a million dollars worth of liability insurance. And they're going to have to pay for it? I, I'm, I this is the continuation of the discussion at the last meeting. So. What, what, I, what, I'm sorry, but I, this is why. What's the, the genesis of this? I'm, is, is, did something happen? I don't understand. No, nothing happened. We needed to get insurance for the historical society. As a, as a rental, as a renter, you know, for the center school. The conversation came up around, well, what about the rest of the people that use our buildings? So this is an, an effort to... Yeah, there's, a, there's a hole in our coverage. So if somebody, if the snowmobile club or the Grange has a meeting and somebody gets hurt at that meeting in the town hall, who's liable? We are. Right, but we have insurance to cover that. Not for private 
they're not towns related. They're so when, so as towns. an example, and, and again, I, I'm a big believer that we should be opening our facilities up so that we're good community partners with a number of organizations who don't have any money. The Grange being an example of this, but I know that there are yeah, Cal Ripken baseball, suburban football. Uh, it, oh, they use the elementary school cafeteria for meetings an hour a quarter. And if they have a problem, we have a problem. Well, but there what? hasn't been a problem. This didn't stem from a problem. So this we're going to ask organizations with very little money. You don't have to. I. I have a real problem with this. I. I. I would like to argue that one of the functions of the town government is to support organizations and. For routine meetings, I think it's a risk that the town should be willing to assume. I can see if you're going to have a festival or, or something where you expect, I don't know, more than 50 people, more than 75 people. I would establish some sort of trigger for this. Not a routine meeting. You're going to drive. Who would pay for the coverage for the town? For the for the less than yeah yeah I I think it's a I so we'll think we'll pay the thirty five dollars. Well, I think you assume the rent yourself insure, okay. as you have been for two hundred years. Already well, insured, but we're not if that's the problem. We're not. We're, we're, not, we're, we're lucky not. nobody has, has sued us for the, any of this. We're well, insured, we're insured for town employees. I, I, I get that, fund. but the church. The church does not charge for somebody holding a meeting there. They charge for a wedding and a banquet. They, they then require somebody to, to get insurance. Yeah, I have to sell the church at the chapel. At the chapel, yeah. you do. If somebody holds a small meeting at the chapel, if there's a neighborhood meeting, they don't have to self insure. No, I, I don't think, I this think was there's a trigger for point. Meetings. It was intended for events and well, that's, ongoing That was my question. Right, well, then we should, because for instance, I know that, and I don't know the name of the group, but I know that there's a dance group that uses the elementary school gym slash cafeteria once in a while for their practices. And, and, and Alan McCardle could explain what the they Morris do much dance. better than I. What's that? Morris dance. Group. Yeah. I, I think that we're being good community neighbors when we make our facilities that are already underutilized. So I, I agree. But I just don't want, I mean, I think we have been lucky that yeah. well, nobody's I, been hurt. I could suggest that you, you define event. Sure. Can I and, and create a, a sort of, if it's bigger than that. You can yeah. maybe waive by the select board upon request in discretion of the board. So you do have the option to waive the fee. Okay. Well, let me ask, well, what is, what, Mark, what is our? Right. What's our liability I mean, policy right now? What is our dollar limits? What do we have in there now for the town? You mean what do we ask of people? No, no. You got a thousand, a million, and two million here. Coverage. What is our? What is our policy? policy? Yes. I, I don't know it offhand. It's in my office, but I, I don't know it offhand. I think Judy raises. Uh, I, I, I think this uh, distinction between a meeting and an event is perhaps practical. Uh, an event being something other than a regularly scheduled meeting by a recognized organization that has, you know, has historically, you know, there's some way we could define well, you, you one it. thing from another, but we have to be careful about that. Some on the, the second page, it says, greatly resident or nonprofit public function. Well, it's, it's a reduced cost, but... There's, there was a 1990 policy that I'm not even sure if any of you were aware of it, but I, I wasn't until I started digging around and I did find a 1990 policy that was adopted by the select board at that time. And it was pretty brief, but actually the fees were much higher on it. And I don't think they've ever been, I don't think anyone's ever followed that policy. I mean, not in recent times anyway. Or renewed it. I don't think it's been updated since 1990, no. Oh, it's a policy. It's just a policy. No. But the fees were actually much higher than what we're on here also. 
I mean, they were in the range of a hundred dollars for you know private events and things like that. Do you it, know if any? We don't know if anybody actually paid that. Well, I don't. Know. I'm not aware of anybody who's taking his. So, what's the cost of the umbrella coverage? To an applicant? No, to the town. I mean, we're going to have a if if, if this is if, if if what I'm hearing is this is to offset umbrella coverage for organizations that are not directly tied to the town. To supplement it. What's that? To supplement it. It's, it's an actual, they have to pay for this. I know, but it's, it's a previous layer of coverage. I don't think it takes away your umbrella coverage. Yeah, no, but it, it, well, it's okay. It's supplement. What does that cost? What are we paying? What would we have to pay to cover outside organizations? You're already covering it when they're not. But, but not according to Mark. Outside what? organizations, I don't know. Now you're, what you're covering is the lack of, they don't, if, if you don't require them to have anything special, then you're assuming the responsibility. I, I get that, so, if, so, if, so, so take that thought process forward. If we don't require outside organizations to bring coverage with them, what would it cost us to provide that supplemental insurance? Right. That's my we're question. But according to Mark, we're not covered. The, the insurance company is going to say you're not covered for a private event at the town hall. What Your policy is, is not you, covered. You will, you will bear the cost. You, you will. We will be liable. We will. Liable. Liable. Insurance will not cover the claim. Right. That's what they're saying. Yeah. What would it cost? I, I think if we're going to talk about fees, well, how much? How much is? It says thirty-five dollars. How much is their but policy? But it, it comes down to the insurance company. What? What, what is insurance, insurance company will cover? And what will they charge for the coverage? Will they cover? Building. It's because that's building is in such bad shape too. And that would also cover your outside event, I would imagine. And and I gather this is if I, if the insurance company says. It, it won't cover uh, non-town employees or town functions. Then, then there is no coverage. The town has no coverage on any event. Now maybe Mark needs to. That's my ask. understanding. That is. That's what you're so, saying. so my question is, if we wanted to get coverage that does not currently exist, what would it cost the town? I can find out. I, I think that's a good idea because we're talking about fees. Well, the fees don't, let's tie the fee to additional insurance or something if we're going to actually charge sometimes it. Sometimes it can be staffing or heat or air conditioning. I mean, there, there are other expenses with keeping a building open after hours. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Cleaning and I get that, but that's not, those, those instances are not that prevalent. Uh, again, I apologize because I didn't hear the earlier discussion. Do we know what other times do? But that, and you've got this is a policy from another town, actually. But you're, you're talking of liability coverage here, plus other conditions that that event has to uh, abide by. Just don't let somebody come in, use the building, and walk out and close the door. And the next day, Keith is there cleaning up all day. Well, that's, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. But I know, but that can happen if you don't have some kind of policy. I don't no uh, problem with a with a with a policy in terms of leaving the building how it was how how they found it all that kind of stuff. There just needs to be a rationale for anything that we write down. When and when and, when people rent Hurley Heat Park, the fire association fighters association rents it and then they sell beer and stuff down there. I mean they have to get a liquor license and all that, but surely they have to get some sort of insurance, right? I don't know that. That's, I, I don't know. I don't know what they've done. Because that's an accident waiting to happen, mm -hmm. compared to you know the Grange or the snowmobile club. And I don't know if I don't remember them ever having to take out insurance, invent insurance. But I'm not sure they don't know they should. I just don't know it, because you don't know whether they carry insurance with them already. That's right. I you have no idea. We have no idea. I have no idea. I know when I do concerts at the Chapel, I have to insure every show, and it costs about a thousand bucks. For the per, season. per show? Per no, season. not per show. It's about 100 bucks per show. I think it's a typical event insurance is on the order of $100. But yeah. 
but I don't think you could ask the range to do that for a 20 person meeting. And they, right, and they can say dog business. And the library, I mean, right. there, there is some the ex exclusions right. in and Mary Ellen's like that. Yeah. There's some in here, so I, I guess so we, we have to give this some more thought, I think. Yeah, it, yeah this is just a start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this is a good start. Uh, how does the town cover early field just as a sports? It's covered under our town insurance. When Cal Ripken youth, base, youth Baseball uses it, we carry our own insurance. You being Cal Ripken? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's any different than what it we're talking about there. here? That's exactly Well, there are other people who use it. Well, I know. So they should also be carrying well, their insurance. Soccer, 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 so the question, the policy yeah. question would be then the no. high school we should yeah. not allow people to use the field if they're not self-insured. Right. Basically. Because we don't want to. It's just the, the opposite. Who doesn't have to be insured? That's the list you need. <laughs> the rest is pretty straightforward, I think. Well, and that'd be who's covered under the town policy. Right, that's what I mean. The, you guys waive the Grange, perhaps, and waive the library. And I will find out what it well, costs. Well, we waive them, but we have to make sure they're insured. Can, can, right. can you get... Oh, so somebody has to pay for that. Yeah. Would the cost more sort of an executive summary of what we're covered under what? what things are covered both in buildings and on fields and what is not covered and and, and sort of the reader's digest version and that gets sticky Dan <laughs> because then you have the town subsidizing private nonprofit organizations right which we can't do which we're not supposed to do yeah, good point. So. because the other thing that came up was the snowmobile club yeah. uses town property for their events do they have insurance or are they covered under ours I doubt that association has insurance, but that's a guess. No, they use like the, they used to use the fire station all field type of thing. For well, yeah, and their their trails are across town property. Well, over there and on Early Park. And I believe their trails are insured, though. Didn't that come up at the last meeting? Oh, yeah, but yeah. also, do you, yeah. if you are a snowmobile, if you own a snowmobile, don't you carry some level of insurance? No. So if someone's it's only required in Vermont and New York. So if someone's going through That's my crazy. property, which they do on a regular basis when there's snow, and they flip, am I liable? Is there a trail on your property? Yeah, that the Snowmobile Association maintains. You shouldn't be liable. But you I shouldn't. don't know that. I mean, you shouldn't be. Well, but unless your child leaves a sled in the trail. You better <laughs> well, that's sort of my point. It's my property. <laughs> I, 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 I get to leave a sled wherever I want can, to. Can we yeah. move along here and continue this? Yeah. Uh, All right. 250th anniversary? Um, Adelia has mentioned it a couple of times, and I put this on the, uh, and I think Fred has met, you've mentioned it also, right? The 250th yeah. anniversary committee. How do you guys feel about um, moving in the direction of appointing a committee to, um, to, just so that they have adequate time to prepare for the 250th? I know it's what? 2021. Yeah. 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 So, so, so we got, got, we got Judy and we got. But Dan. planning takes a few years on that kind of thing. How about if we, on our new family website, we have a, we, we should actually have a place for people to volunteer for committee assignments, et cetera. We it talked should, about that at the last meeting. Also. This should be a big part of it. I'd say that we look for volunteers before we appoint. So I guess you ask for representatives from the Historical Society and the yeah, Adelia didn't want, I think she wanted to make sure that it didn't get put on the historical yeah, society or commission. Right, representation. Sure, yeah. so, and, and, and the other thing that I thought with this, related to this, is we should be putting money aside for this event to happen rather than putting it all in the, the last year's budget to put in, I don't know, five, ten, fifteen thousand every year for it. Four or five years, or whatever to, to as, save up money for it. As, as Dan correctly pointed out at one of our special town meetings at the elementary school, <laughs> we haven't even been entrusted with a capital stabilization fund that gets annual incremental to pay for things like windows on town hall. Yeah. Now, I would put that as a priority over the, t and I think that the 250th should get a little bit of cash, but. The town needs to trust us that we're not creating what was called a slush fund 
to accomplish the need to fund these things. So you're right, Fred. So it's not just all of a sudden in this, in, in, in the fiscal budget as we're approaching the, this event. Right. But that being said, as important as the 250th is, we should be funding our capital stabilization on an annual basis long before we fund the 250th anniversary on an annual basis. Because, you know, that's my. Dan, we were going to work on that to get that on an article I found. Aren't we? I think we've got something going with uh, uh, building capital maintenance. Part of a stabilization fund? No. Which are you on now? I'm talking about the stabilization. I, I, I'm being somewhat flippant in terms no. of we need to revisit that issue. But we do have a capital stabilization I know, but we, 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 got, we were told we were not allowed to automatically put money in right. we have to, vote to plan it. forward. Right. Why don't we try this again and see what happens? What do we have to lose? I don't think we should. And I have no problem at the same time doing that 250th, but. Me neither. Okay. So. I mean, we, we. So that's an item of future business then. Yeah. Okay, yeah, what's next? Just wanted to, but it should people be keep noted. mentioning it to me, and I thought I should just bring it to you guys oh, yeah. and ask yeah. how you feel about it. Yeah. Lease extension. Lease extension. Uh, keep I did not hear back from Greg in time for the last meeting, so I requested on his behalf a 30 day extension because we're already into March now. They, uh, the following day, I heard from him and they were going to request a 90 day extension. So I'm asking you now for an additional 60 days over the 30 that you approved in the last meeting which would bring us through May 31st. What are they paying a month? Now, uh, I just adjusted it. It was, I don't know, $900 a month or something like that. That's all. It's not much. Okay. If they, have, they have very little space. They right. have one office here and a copy room. So. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I will probably have to work with them we may have to move them out of that space and they're aware of that because if we need that for meeting space, we have some nights in April that we have multiple conflicting meetings and we may need to set that up. So, I mean, we were expecting them to be gone at the end of the year, so. Right, okay. If you're, you're everybody's okay with I'm that? I'm fine, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, town administrator updates, I'll go through these real quick. Um, so, Paul, at your request, uh, you asked for Keith and Jim to come in. Keith obviously came in tonight. Yeah. Jim will be in at the next meeting. Okay. I, I asked good. them to do different meetings yeah, so that's we can vary our agenda. Um, the Historical Society, I was just going to let you know that we did receive a policy. Um, so we're all set on that. I just wanted to mention real quick, um, March 30th, 7 p.m. I know you guys are aware, but for everyone that's at home and or not aware, there's a public information session that will be held here at 7 o'clock on March 30th. All three towns have been invited, their finance committees, the SCAMS Board of Oversight, their select boards, um, and we're expecting a presentation by the director or SCAMS uh, Board of Oversight reps regarding future housing. That's at 7 o'clock, correct? That's at 7 o'clock and it will be right in this room. Um, Another quick update, the HVAC software server situation is installed, it's operating. So we now have control over our heat and air conditioning. And, um, it's all done remotely now. There's no um, software on our computers. We can log in from anywhere and adjust temperatures here and there. And, um, but I just wanted to let you know that that, is, that project is complete. Roof repairs, another topic related to this building. Uh, all the parts are in, the snow guards and what, whatnot are, are in now, so the, you'll start to see some roof work happening probably in the next week or two. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to um, do a quick update on our website. Mary Ellen, Jonathan and myself, we, we had a conference call with virtual town halls and schools um, last week. We kind of went over some websites that we liked 
what we liked about them, and I'm going to just put up on the screen here a, a mock-up of the first draft and just touch on a couple things just to get some feedback from you guys real quick. I only could get the light tank. The gasoline tank cans are good visuals with. That's the uh, biohazard day. It's the household hazardous waste day. Yeah. Thank you. Dan. So I just wanted to point out a couple things and find out how you feel about it. Um, obviously, our updated town seal is up there in the corner. There's the Citizen Action Center that we that we found on some other uh, town websites. Large buttons, easy to read, and they're probably the most the eight most used tabs um, on our website. So that's an option um, that we decided to go with. This here, I know no one wants to see this, but it's it's actually advertising a household hazardous waste collection. This is something that will be always moving so it'll be a scroll it'll event. be a scroll right new events will constantly be scrolling on that so as you're looking at the home page you'll see that changing uh, but again i can't it's not a live website so i can't go to any of these tabs and show you anything it's just a mock-up of the first page here um, we tried to keep it all on one page so i don't know if you've noticed that some town websites you have to scroll down through multiple pages just to see what's on the home page. So, um, you know, we're really trying to keep it as simple as possible. Um, any, do you guys have any comments or questions or? Do you need the tabs have calendar? I can't read them all. This is calendar right here. Oh, okay. Minutes and agendas is, is a big one that people. One of the things that we talked about that we, we thought we wanted to do is reserve page real estate for things that we wanted people to know when they came to the website by hook or crook. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use the example of polling hour seven to seven. Well, yeah. that, that's kind of what this section was, right? But that's scrolling. So is there, is, is there, in addition to that, is there any, is there any place that we could have still, could still have something that we don't want to ever go away because it's so important? Yeah, we could probably do a one of the citizens. Yeah, I think some of the some of the websites had like this has a news button, but you have to actually hit it. I think some of the websites did have like a permanent. Um, some of them were flashing. Some something were, maybe find it maybe in the find it fast button or something. Okay. Something that says all right, critical information. Click here. Whatever it well, is. Well, there's definitely room. I mean, all of this can be shifted. Something. Like something. Like something. Like just, yes. There should be somewhere. Like you have now on the when you open the page, there's some highlights on there. Yep. Yeah. How does a yep. find it fast? What is that versus a search? You got to search. Do you remember what he said about that? Mary Ellen and I were talking this morning. I, I was a little that. confused with the, what the difference between the find it fast and the citizen action center is because the citizen action center is the the eight most commonly referenced areas that you know that people want to know about. And I thought that Find It Fast was kind of the same thing, but I didn't get a clear understanding of, of, of the difference. I didn't totally understand what that was either. I think if it's hard, I, mean, I like the how do I, and you click that one, and then it's just had a ton of options in terms of how do you, you know, find it. Or how do you apply for this or do that? So I, I think we were thinking it may be comparable to a how do I. And I'm not sure how, how it's any different from. I think you. Yeah. Right, well, th but again, those eight sections are exemplary only. We could make those eight tabs anything we wanted to make. Because oh, yeah. Personally, I'm like, assessor's maps? I'm not sure. It may be. Oh, that would be. Really? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's something that's been asked for a long time. What did somebody say wanted to, to find out where to go for a building permit? They would go, to, would they they would go to departments, probably. Inspection services. Yeah, it's some kind of link to inspection services. Or, or that could be under a how do I or frequently ask questions. Right. Can it, that options. Can it be under a search window, like the find it fast, say building permits, you type in and it would take it to so that? Search window up in the To that site? Not, I'm not sure you, you can. I mean, we'd have yeah. to get a sense of what's the most, what are the most pressing items that townspeople want to yeah. see. Building permits may be in it, may not be. I mean, yeah. Let's well, do a little virtual town meeting. People know what I mean. They must 
they're in the business of knowing what people look for in town. So well, how different to a town? I mean, that's what that's the beauty of analytics. So we know what people are searching. Right. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm saying that they've probably done analytics. So if you want a, a police department, say, how would you find a police department? Department. Department. Under departments. Departments. Under departments. Yeah. So any board and committee can like have a page, any department can have a page, but you don't have to see it all on the home page. Right. You know, it's well, the other thing is, is the other consideration I, I, I'm worried about or concerned about is how easy is it for us to manage this thing and to change it according to what we want. You mean initially or after or, it's yeah. up and running? Yeah. How, uh, while we're running it, while we, yeah, when we're using it. If we want to change something, is that a big deal or can we just go in? Well, I think the big difference is, is the support. There's tutorials every month. I mean, if I have any questions, I've, I've got a place to, to. You can call and right. talk to a human being. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's 24-7 oh, tech, tech support. Oh, well, then right. we're good. It has to be easier than what we have now. I like it so much better than what we have now. It's so busy. You don't know where your eye wants to And you go. move the cursor and the page goes off the screen. Yeah. yeah. Is, 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 it, is, it, is publications, things like, can be forms of publications? Or, or is that publications like? Town report, uh, bylaws. Uh, bylaws are there. Bylaws and regs are there. Um, I, I think. Town reports could be either a tab or it could be in a town. Publications report. would cover. Well, you could do forms and publications instead of just forms. Yeah, or, or sure. publications for violence and yeah. you know, could I, encompass. But I guess I, I still think in the, the find it fast or search window, you should be able to type something in. You can go to all these commercial sites online. Just take Home Depot, you're looking for a rug. Okay, you can go through furniture and well, and, and search, search would do that. Search. search would do that. Yeah, um, you can do that. It'll search the entire site. Up top. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah it's search. Very, it's very, very prominent. There. But I thought a few minutes ago you were saying that you would you would go. It's under department, so why put it under there? Well, department is a routine look. a routine way to. Right. But if you knew you wanted I know, to search, but if you want to search on, on a word, either or way or should get you to the same. If you know that a building permit is going to be in the building department, and you go that way, or if you just type in building permit, it will either way you're going to get to the same page, the building inspectors. Yeah, I think it's easier to type it in. And, uh, well, and, and we have, and, and that, and it exists. Yeah, fine. I mean, that's the, uh, that's why it's it's just, it gives you options. You, you can yeah. go okay. various okay. ways. Good. All right. Anyway, well I just wanted you guys to see that's that. We'll keep working that's on That's great. That. Okay, new business. Back. Solar resolution. So, Paul, do you want to take this one? This was sure. uh, something that um, Paul wanted to bring forward, and I, this is a resolution from the city of Northampton. North this was being circulated by various groups uh, who were concerned that, oh, and by the way, I'd like to suggest that we double side copy when we print just to reduce paper use. Um, this is because well, you, there's concern that uh, people aren't going to be able to qualify for net metering credits if they put up solar, and uh, there's various other uh, situations, uh, problems going on that, uh, like Eliminating the caps on net metering. I thought that was the driver on this. That was the larger that's, driver. That's the biggie. That's the one I think we should that's focus on. That's the biggie. On. And Mass Municipal Association for resolution is calling for the same. Uh, eliminating is essentially raising the net metering cap at the retail rate without adopting, without adding minimum monthly charges on solar customers. Because there's a move of foot, foot across the country <coughs> to. Uh, create regulations that essentially penalize people who adopt solar by charging them more on their uh, on their monthly bills, so the utilities can make up lost revenues from 
generating power. Uh, if a lot of people put up solar, then the utilities are out of revenue from selling their own power. Even though they're supposedly decoupled, so distributors and producers are supposed to be different, but uh, I don't know much, that's a very complicated uh, scenario. Well. But at any rate, so I thought, well, maybe we should add our voice to the growing chorus of towns and groups in the Commonwealth who want to make sure that people are fair, paid a fair rate for their, their electricity that they put into the grid. And so this is an effort to join 175 other towns in the Commonwealth. That's over half the towns in Massachusetts that are affected by the current net metering cap. Now those that don't have solar, are we subsidizing the solar people? Meaning, you, like you, I'm not picking on you. I right? have solar. So right. Are you subsidizing us? There's some, that's costing, that they're billing people like myself who don't have solar more to, well, to compensate for what they're paying somebody. I think the argument that would be made is that because you have fewer yeah. people paying into, they're not paying. Me. They're just running my meter backwards. Right, but but because you're no because you aren't paying, you and I aren't paying an electric bill. Sometimes I do pay an electric bill. Sometimes I don't. And, and, well, I'll, I'll use me as an example. I I never pay an electric bill. The argument would be that since I don't pay an electric bill, when, and those like me but the utility still has to run the base load that it's costing individuals who don't have solar more money to cover that base load demand. That's gonna be the argument. I'm not sure I buy the argument, but that's gonna be the argument that's made. The same is true when, when um, you know, 20 years ago when the paper mills left Holyoke, and all of a sudden these big companies weren't paying the electric bill anymore, it spread the burden of covering the same demand to those of us who were left. So I, I get it, but at the residential level, what I'm doing is so insignificant. Uh, I'm not sure that your electric rates are higher because I have solar, because of Well, one of the things scale that you're doing, Jonathan, is you're producing power and putting it into somebody's distribution network. And right. so therefore you should pay to be able to use the distribution network, which I think is reasonable. Mm -hmm. I think everybody pays to use the distribution. That's right. what our and, and charge we do pay is. For that. And we do pay. And, and we do pay. So, you know, we, we have two parts of our bill. We have the energy part and we have the distribution part. Well, if you produce your own power, you don't have to pay the energy part. You have to pay the distribution part to be able to use the distribution network so you, your electricity can go somewhere and somebody else can use it. Right. That's electricity the utility doesn't have to produce, so they're saving money. So why should they charge you for electricity they don't have to produce? Because they're, they're selling it to somebody else. But you're using your system to... And what you're paying for is you're paying the distribution fee every paying month. That. Oh, you pay for that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Not only pay for the distribution fee, but Dan, I wound up the year with a $250 credit on my electric bill that I'm not going to get paid for because they don't pay. Because you overproduce. Because I overproduced. So I subsidized your bill by $250. So the, cool. the one thing, that, the one thing that, that, that we do benefit from because, unless you have battery backup, you are paying for the ability to light your home or heat your home depending upon how you heat your home at night when your solar is not generating so I, I, I get that um, and that's and that's going to be through baseload that's going to be the dirtiest nastiest type of electricity that's generated um, that being said I think what we're doing offsets that by a lot because of all the benefits that, that having solar on your home brings not just just to you but to society at large. Um, I, I, I'd like to take a look at this. I, I'm all for this. I think the net metering thing is the big drive. The utilities actually uh, 
make money because if we're all producing electricity during the day in the summer when it's hot and the electricity load is the greatest, the demand, we're shaving their demand so they don't have to resort to more expensive production. Uh, and, and that's, although they pass, they pass all these costs on to us anyway, so they're not really saving. Let, let, me not, let me see if I understand this correctly. If you're producing more electricity than you use, the net metering puts the, uh, measures that and puts this, the electricity on the grid and they charge you a distribution fee for the amounts that you put on the grid? You get charged a distribution fee regardless of how much you use or produce. If you're plugged into the grid, you pay the distribution fee. Oh, okay. Right. I, I don't but know. But then how do you get a zero? Because, I, because what they do is you, through, through the system that they have in place, if, when I charge, when I generate more electricity than I'm using, mm -hmm. I can bank it. And so then when I'm not generating as much electricity, I draw from that bank. Right. But don't you get a bill for the distribution? I get a bill for the distribution. I just, I, when I say I'm not getting a bill, I'm not it being charged charge. any general, general, any, oh, okay. any general. Okay. Okay. $250 credit sure. covers the distribution and transmission. Right. The, the hitch it. The servicing costs. Yeah. They're pulling, plus, from, they're pulling the, from your generation. Plus the energy I used, and I still wound up with a surplus over the years. Right. That's why most installers will say you should install just shy of what you're generating, so you don't get caught in Judy's predicament as she she paid money for more installation. I, I look at it as a gift. Well, and, then, and, and that generosity is what much appreciated. Where are your name on the plaque yeah. on the town? <laughs> all right. So, Paul, how would you feel if we all looked at this? I, I'm inclined. I like it. I want to. I would. I would let. I would not let this wait too long because they're uh, they're dealing with a uh, sort of an omnibus energy bill as we speak. I don't okay. know what the legislative calendar is for consideration of that bill. But it's not too far away, so if we could do this by next meeting, next meeting? I think that would be okay. That'd be great. Now, does this address the commercial aspect that we discussed earlier or not? As far as they can, we can't put in any commercial? I don't think this addresses, no, I think this is residential. Residential. Yeah. Well, net metering, is it residential net metering or is it any net metering? I think it's any net metering. Isn't it? um, I thought it was any net metering. We should study this further. I thought it was just residential. No, I could be wrong. All right. Residents, businesses, and communities. Okay, different. We potentially have three commercial projects on hold. Here, Mike. Yeah. Maybe right. four. Well, that's because of uh, the, the commercial. The cap on commercial net metering, right. which is a lower rate than residential. And, but we want to make sure that we're fighting to make sure that that, that cap is lifted. The yeah. original version of this, Northampton's version, had they made reference to a landfill project and some, some other commercial projects. I had to pull it out because they didn't relate to weight. But, but maybe we could put language in there about because, you know, because Waitley is is in, is is vested in expansion of commercial solar installation we want to make sure that the the cap and again i'm not i'm butchering the wording right now but we want to make sure the cap on net metering is lifted so that we can take advantage of the opportunities that it has to to increase solar generation in, in Whaley, right for the benefit of everybody I, you know and again i butchered that wording terribly commercial and Commercial and residential. Yeah, it right. doesn't it, specify here, so I assume it applies to both. Any but let's make sure it does. Meter and yeah. So let's look at it, homework assignment, and make sure this is top of mind. I'll put it on the agenda for, for whatever date it is. Yeah. 12th or the 29th, I'm sorry. Okay, what else? Um, next up, I have a letter here. Uh, you guys. You guys did sign one of these letters a while back. It was a request, a specific request from uh, Environment Massachusetts, and I'll pass it around. It's very brief if you want to just look at it. Um, 
they're looking for support from you guys again. I believe it's the exact same letter we signed last time, maybe six months ago, something like that. While we're reading that, why don't you go to the next item? Uh, scenic byway, I'm gonna ask you to pass on and I'll come back to that at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, wood, wood turtle contract, I'm gonna pass around a contract, which I believe we just needed. Yeah, I just need Jonathan, you to sign this. It's a $12,000 contract to handle the uh, wood turtle study that we need to uh, be agreed to as part of the permitting process for the Mill River project. This was funded at the September 29th special town meeting for $12,000. Then the last item? The last item is a, a minute also ask you to sign a lease renewal not a renewal a new lease for our copier uh, this is for the main copier in the select board office back here uh, okay our current copier is a four-year lease this is a three-year lease so that we don't have to also get town meeting approval it's 142 dollars and 37 cents a month it includes the maintenance plan so there's no increase in cost to us we did negotiate a stapler finisher. It's network capable um, for our transition when we do get on the server here, which I expect to be within the next couple of months, we'll be able to, once we're networked, we'll be able to use it as a printer and it's unlimited copies and unlimited printing, so. That's the one out here in the hall? No, it's the one in the um, select board office or treasure collector office. The what's, main office there. What's the one in the hall? Do we own, we own that one? Oh, and why don't we own this one? Uh, I don't know. We leased it last time. I don't know why we chose to lease. I think what they were both leased at one time. And this one, because it had so few copies on it, we decided to buy it out at the end of the lease. Yeah. Um, this one we lease rather than purchase it. So. And we looked at the cost to buy one uh, instead of leasing? I have not looked at the cost to buy one. I mean, the, the, the benefit to leasing for that machine anyway is that it's a high volume machine and okay. we can just rent it and use it, hand it in and get it. Like the machine that we have now doesn't have networking capabilities. We can't name the files. They, they get outdated pretty quickly. It's, you know, it's, it's a huge improvement for us to be able to now name the files Mary Ellen, we can use it as, we can actually uh, say Mary Ellen because she has a need for a printer. We don't have to go and replace her printer now. She can use that as a printer. As the printers in the building now that we're consolidated under one roof go, we can use that machine as a printer since this is unlimited and we can save a ton of money on toner. Okay. It includes toner. It includes toner, includes yeah. toner yeah. Let's get it signed. So. Um, are, should we sign this if we're okay with this? The letter, yes. Yes, I'm okay with it. You guys want to sign it? Sign what? Environment Massachusetts letter. Sure. Fred? You're signing, aren't you? No, it's all three of us. That one is all three of you. The no. copy or lease, I believe. Oh, that's all three of us. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Well, we're going to sign these. I, I do want to bring up the need to put on an agenda that, I, I, and I think Mark's going to agree with this. That this, it's incredibly inefficient to have all three of us sign everything at all meetings. I, I, I want to figure out a way to allow Mark to sign some of these these sort of daily signing things. You know, this 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 contract here. Oh my God! Copy our contract. Yeah, we got to figure out a way to allow Mark to sign these, and it's going to make his job easier. It's going to make these meetings shorter, and the taxpayers of this town are going to have a more efficient government operation. Because right now, signing, what did I just sign, Mary Ellen? The, uh, uh, turtle, the contract. turtle contract. Come on, we support. We. It's not like we didn't already vote this. No, thing. we already had this discussion. Right We've now. already. We, so let's just. Whatever Mark needs to do to make this change happen, and I don't know if we have to go to town meeting for this or what, but. Let's make it happen. I don't have any signing authority. That's what right, I'm and we have to get you signing authority. And sometimes I do ask you to approve certain items, and, and you guys have been good about that. But I, I can see what it would take to. Okay. If it has to be a town meeting, or whatever it is, but it's, okay. but it's it's similar to you know the assessor's 
the assistant assessor doesn't have signing authority either. I, I guess the, all three of us sign everything that needs to be acted upon on the assessors. I guess we could use the same argument there. Why don't we let Cynthia sign all the excise tax rebates that we do every month, the, the uh, APR requests that come in every year. I mean, there's 65, 70 of them we sign every, every year. Wouldn't get any argument out of me. You know, it's the same thing. The, the three of us sit there and sign 70 times every year. Right. Did the assessors decide to give that new property on Route 5 uh, tax exempt status? We haven't decided yet. Haven't so, I, all right, let's move forward on that. Mark, is there anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Okay, much to return. Come Second. back to you with a, another home page update. Okay. And you'll find out about the signature stuff because it's yep. just, just let's be efficient. Thank you.